Hello everyone. Welcome to C Academy YouTube channel. My name is Velele Ngosi. In today's lesson, we discuss women reproduction. We will be focusing on fertilization and the implantation. I will show you all the processes that are taking place from when the ovum is fertilized until the implantation of blastocyst. Without wasting more time, let's get to it. Like every day, all our videos start with <coughs> examination guidelines. So this document that you see on your screen is an examination guideline from the Department of Basic Education. So today we will be focusing on fertilization and the development of zygote to blastocyst and then implantation, gestation and the role of the placenta. So we will be focusing on this content here. So if you want this document, you can download it from the Department of Basic Education. So let's start. Uh, first of all, let's start with the definitions. So uh, the definitions of fertilization. So fertilization is the fusion of the hyploid sperm cell nucleus and the hyploid egg cell nucleus to form a diploid nucleus zygote. So this is the definition of a fertilization. And then now we go to copulation. Copulation is the engagement in sexual intercourse. And then implantation. The implantation is the process by which an embryo become attached to the uterine wall. Or the uterine wall is the endometrium. And then gestation. And gestation is the period of development of the embryo from fertilization to the birth. So a, a gestation is just the fancy way of pregnancy. Then the next we go to the process of fertilization so uh, i give you the definition fertilization is when uh, a nucleus from a sperm cell fuses with a nucleus from the ovum or the egg cell so here is the process uh, a millions of sperm transferred from the male penis to vagina and then the sperm swim up the uterus in into the fallopian tube if an ovum is present in the fallopian tube a nucleus of one of the spermatozoa may penetrate and fertilize the ovum. And then 23 chromosome from the sperm fuses with 23 chromosome from the ovum. And a diploid uh, zygote is formed. So here is the process. Uh, the penis will uh, deposit the sperm or semen here. And then the sperm cells will pass through the cervix move up and then passes through the uterus to the fallopian tube and then in the fallopian tube if they find a an ovum or a matured ovum or matured egg then it will fertilize the egg then here is the process of fertilization where there's a lot of sperm around the egg and then only one sperm will pass through immediately after the sperm has passed through the jelly layer start to be tough then it's no longer allowing another sperm to pass through so only one sperm will pass through and deliver its nucleus and then it just on, only the nucleus is passing through the jelly layer so then this is the process of fertilization and then when 23 chromosome when a nucleus with 23 chromosome fuses with a nucleus with 23 chromosome we end up with 46 a nucleus chromosome which is a diploid zygote then then now we have a zygote so this is the process of fertilization and then the next thing we go to the formation of blastocyst so after fertilization this zygote a zygote is a fertilized egg so we call it a zygote then the zygote will undergo mitosis to multiply itself uh, many times so here we've got the zygote the zygote has a nucleus from the male and the nucleus from the female and then this zygote will undergo meiotis if you see here the zygote is a diploid so it contains 46 chromosome and then this zygote will undergo mitosis then when it undergo mitosis now we have two cells 
So we have one, two. And then these two cells, they also undergo mitosis. And then now we have four cells. So this process of mitosis is taking place regularly until we have something called morula. Morula takes about uh, three days from fertilization. So uh, about three days, we will have something called morula. And then this morula is also undergoing mitosis. And then we end up with a blastosis. Uh, another name for blastosis is it's a ball of cells. It's another name for blastosis, uh, a ball of cells. And then this blastosis also will undergo mitosis and then as it goes to mitosis it will implant itself here at the utera so when it it implant itself at the at the endometrium or the uterus now we call it inbro this is the inbro now it's no longer a blastocyst so inbro is when a blastocyst has implant itself at the utera so now this is the process of formation of a uh, blastocyst. Uh, the blastocyst is a zygote undergoing mitosis many times. Then we end up with implanted blastocyst. So this is the process. And then now uh, from the examination guideline, we go to the implantation and the gestation and the role of placenta. So I give you the definition of implantation and then the role of estrogen and the progesterone in maintaining pregnancy. We know that estrogen and then progesterone, their role is to maintain the, the endometrium. So even after the fertilization has taken place, the estrogen and the progesterone, they will keep on uh, secreted by uh, corpus luteum until around three months. After three months, then... Uh, Placenta will take over and then secrete the estrogen and the progesterone because if the estrogen and progesterone it stop being secreted, the FSH will be secreted and a new follicle will develop inside the the the, the ovary. So we don't we don't want uh, another development of the follicles because the process of pregnancy is still on. So we don't want another development of the alcohol. So estrogen and the progesterone also make sure that the pituitary gland does not secrete FSH. So this is how they maintain the pregnancy. And then we must know the structure of the developing feature in the uterus using diagram. So this is the structure. So uh, you must know how to label this structure, more especially uh, the umbilical cord placenta this is it this is a, a uterus and then inside the uterus there is a fetus or a, a kid who is developing and then you must know that there is this is a placenta that is where there's the connection between the fetus and the mother is on the placenta and this is the fetus a uterus the chorion and amnion these are the membranes so uh, two membrane one is inside one is outside, chorions and the amnion. And then chorions is go there and we have a chorion villus here at the placenta, which are increasing the surface area. And then we, we, there is a fluid inside the amnion, which is called amniotic fluid. So this is the fluid that is inside there. And then this space inside is a amnion cavity. The fetus is inside there amnion cavity and then make sure you understand this sketch so this is the cervix uh, the vagina and then the fallopian tubes so next we discuss the function so according to the guideline we must know the function of the following parts function of the chorion and the chorionic villi function of the amnion amniotic cavity and the amniotic fluid so and then the function of the umbilical cord including umbilical artery and the umbilical vein another the last thing is the function of the placenta so we must make sure we know these functions these functions these are the functions that the examiner wants us to know we must make sure that we understand these functions so let me help with uh, 
the functions so here are the functions that must be known uh, we have uh, umbilical cord so umbilical cord has a uh, three cord we have two arteries and one vein which is we have an umbilical artery and we have umbilical vein so the umbilical cord artery carries the oxygenated blood and the waste product from the fetus to the placenta this one take out the waste product and then umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood water nutrients and other substance other substances from the placenta to the fetus so umbilical vein brings stuff to the mm, fetus so you must know the different we have two umbilical artery we have one umbilical vein then the umbilical cord is attached to the placenta then now let's go to the function of the placenta so placenta is a point of attachment of the fetus to the mother so like i just say the umbilical cord is attached to the fetus and the placenta while placenta is attached to the mother so placenta is the point where uh, it's a point of attachment and then it allow diffusion of oxygen and the other substance so in the placenta there is a process of diffusion where nutrients water waste product they diffuse they exchange between the mother and the fetus so the exchange takes place in the placenta and then another thing the placenta it separates fetus and the mother's blood so the mother's blood and the fetus blood are not mixing even if they are circulating but they are not mixing what happened is the diffusion so uh, diffusion it takes place in the placenta without uh, exchanging of blood so this is the function of the placenta now we go to function of the amniotic fluid so amniotic fluid is the fluid inside the amniotic cavity so this fluid it prevents dehydration so and then it maintains the temperature and then it absorbs shock this is the function of this fluid inside the amniotic cavity so another function which is the last one is the chorion chorion is the membrane just next to amnion membrane so the function of the chorion membrane is to protect the fetus and then chorion will increases contact area so as the membrane goes through to the uh, placenta we have chorion villi so the chorion villi increases the contact area so that a uh, more diffusion will take place so these are the functions that uh, according to the examination guideline are the functions that we must know so this is all for today if you have watched this video to this far please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel uh, if you are studying I say good luck with your studies. God bless you. Thank you very much.